एवरीवन आई एम दुर्गा सोजनिया असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम ईसी डिपार्टमेंट एम एल आर आई टी आई एम गोइंग टू गिव द वीडियो लेक्चर फॉर द सब्जेक्ट एम्बेडेड सिस्टम डिजाइन अवर टूडेज टॉपिक फॉर वीडियो लेक्चर इज सेंसर एंड एक्चुएटर्स एंड इंटरफेसिंग ऑफ सेंसर्स एंड एक्चुएटर्स हियर इन सेकेंड यूनिट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कसड कोर ऑफ एम्बेडेड सिस्टम एंड मेमरी इन प्रीवियस सेशन इन टूडे सेशन we we are going to discuss about sensors and actuators interfacing of sensors and actuators so in previous session we have discussed about the memory so how the memory will be organized for embedded system design and different types of memory ram and rom so what is read only memory what is random access memory and types of rom and types of ram sram and dram so the types of rom and ram so what is programmable read only memory erasable and programmable read only memory maskable read only memory flash memory sram dynamic ram and static ram so we have discussed all these topics in previous video session now we are going to discuss about sensors and actuators so what is meant by a sensor what is meant by an actuator so what are the examples for these sensors and actuators what is meant by io sub system so in the sensors and actuators we are going to discuss about the two devices led and push button switch on this video session remaining devices will be discussed in the next session next going to the present session the first one is sensor so what is meant by a sensor it is a transducer device which converts energy from one form to another form for any measurement or control purposes so sensor is nothing but a device which is used to convert from one form of energy to another form of energy like electrical energy to optical energy or uh, mechanical energy to electrical energy or electrical energy to mechanical energy different forms of energies are convertible using these devices here this sensor will be used as a input device so the sensor the device which is used as an input device can be connected for our embedded system as a sensor the for example is hall effect sensor which measures the distance between the cushion and magnet in smart running shoes from adidas so we have smart running shoes in that shoes we have a sensor which is used for measuring the distance between the cushion and the magnet so this is the example for sensor in our embedded system design so likewise we have so many devices are there which are used as an input devices for embedded system design or comes under sensor so sensor is basically input devices used in the embedded system design so next actuators so likewise actuator is an output device so output devices used in the embedded system design so in which form we are representing the output for our application in an embedded system is defined by actuator it is a form of transducer device which converts the signals to corresponding action and it is an output device it is same as sensor but sensor will be used at the input part of the embedded system design and actuator can be used as the output part of the embedded system design example micro motor which adjusts the position of the cushioning element in the shoes from the adidas for the same smart running shoes here the micro motor will be used as an output device so which is used for adjusting the position of the cushioning element so it, it is called as actuator and the sensor which is called as sensor input device so next one is io sub system here io sub system is nothing but we have already discussed that sensors are nothing but input, input devices actuators are nothing but output devices now for any embedded system 
for any embedded system controller or processor. So, how these input devices or output devices here the input devices are known as sensors, output devices are known as actuators. So, how these input and output devices are connected with the processor. So, these are called as IO subsystems. So, the components or the interconnected elements which are used for connecting the input devices and output devices to the processor, to the embedded processor are known as IO subsystems. Here, it facilitates the interaction of the embedded system with the external world. So, it is used to facilitate the interaction of input and output devices with the processor. The interaction happens through the sensors and actuators which are connected at input and output ports of the embedded system. So, whatever the device is connected to the input port and output port, these are all interacted with the IO subsystems. These are not directly, the sensors are not directly interfaced to the input ports and the actuators are not directly interfaced to the output ports. Instead, we have to use some signal conditioning and translating systems like A2D conversion, optocouplers, these are all comes under IO subsystems. So, in some applications where we want to convert the analog signal into the digital signal and that digital signal will be applied to the processor. So, in that case, at the from the input device, whatever the input we have taken from the user, so it will be applied to the analog to digital converter and after conversion of the input to the digital form, we are applying that to the processor. So, these parts which are used for converting the input signal to the required form of the processor or converting the output signal to the required form of the user. So, the systems which are used for this purpose is known as IO subsystems. Next, the devices which are used as sensors and actuators in our embedded system device design. So, the first one is LED. So, LED is light emitting diode. It is an input, it is an output device which is used in an embedded system for an actuator. So, it is a PN junction diode basically and it contains two terminals which is anode and cathode. So, for proper functioning of LED, the anode should be connected to the positive terminal and cathode should be connected to the negative terminal. So, the LED will work only on forward biased condition. So, that the anode will be connected to the positive terminal and cathode will be connected to the negative terminal of the supply voltage. Here, if you observe in this diagram, this is the LED. So, the longer lead of the LED indicates anode, the shorter lead of the LED indicates cathode. Here, if you observe that the VCC is connected to the anode, the ground is connected to the cathode, which indicates negative is connected to cathode positive is connected to anode. The current flowing through the LED must limit it to value below the maximum current that it can conduct. Here, here whenever we are connecting positive supply to the LED anode, it is forward biased and hence maximum current will be flowing through the circuit. So, that to limit that maximum current, we have used a resistor in series with the LED to limit the current through the LED. So, it is an output device which is used for visual indication in any embedded system. Basically, LEDs are used for visual indication in power on and off conditions or to indicate any application whether it is working or not, whether it is in on condition or off condition. In that cases, we have used the LED. LED can be used as an indicator for status of various signals or situations. The examples of in LED are the device on and battery low or charging of battery. So, which indicates in the remote controller whether the system will be on or off. So, it will be indicated by LED. And to indicate the battery low condition with the LED, we can use LED as an output device or actuator. So, next, how can we interface this LED to our processor? Here, we have already discussed that we can use one resistor in series with the LED and the input, the anode of the LED will be connected to, to this positive power supply through this resistor and negative will be connected to the processor port. So, here when 
the microcontroller pin is made low so that is the cathode will be low then the pin becomes ground and current starts flowing from 5 volt source and to ground making led to switch on here whenever the pin is made low that means the led will goes to the forward biased condition and led will going to the on state then the current will flows through the circuit which makes that the led is glowing and when the microcontroller pin is made high if it is connected to high it is reverse biased this is low condition when the microcontroller pin is high the led will be reverse biased and hence it is going to the off state so the led is not glowing and it is switched off in that case so this is the connection how we can interface our microcontroller to the led The next device was push button switch. Typically, a push button switch has two active terminals which are normally open and these two terminals get internally shorted when push button is depressed. So, normally the push button terminals are in open condition. So, when we are connected in any circuit, so if we want to connect that switch to the circuit, then we can short the terminals when the button is depressed. When this button is depressed, then only these two terminals will be shorted. Otherwise, these, but these terminals will be in the open condition. So, when the button is pressed, then it is into the closed condition. So, one leg of the button is connected to the microcontroller and other is connected to the power source. Here, so one terminal of the or one leg of the push button switch is connected to power source and one leg is connected to the microcontroller. So, when the button is open, that is when the button is in not pressed condition, the ground will appear on the microcontroller pin and hence there is no path for 5 volts to circulate. So, therefore, when the switch is in open condition, so the current will not be flows through the circuit. So, it indicates it is in off condition. When the button is pressed, the current starts flowing through the circuit and the 5 volts will appear across the microcontroller pin. So, whenever the switch is connected to these term, whenever the switch is pressed and these two terminals will be shorted and hence these two terminals will be shorted like this and hence this 5 volt supply will be connected to the microcontroller and hence current is flowing through the microcontroller. So, if the microcontroller pin is declared as input pin ground and 5 volts transition at microcontroller pin by pressing and releasing the push button can be read. So, this means that here the push button switch in this microcontroller or for embedded system design, it can be used as input device or sensor. So, this is used as an input device and whenever the switch is pressed, then the 5 volts will be connected to the microcontroller and the data which can be given to this port can be read into the port and when it is released, it can be go to the open state and there is no current flowing in this condition. So, the input can be taken to the microcontroller through this push button switch. So, here this is the circuit which indicates that when the push button switch is connected and whenever the button is pressed then only the LED will be going to on. So, here it is designed that when push button switch is depressed then LED D1 goes to on condition and it should remains on until the push button switch is depressed and this can be repeated. So, here in this circuit when push button switch S1 is pressed, so the circuit goes to the on state and this LED D1 will be in on state and it remains in the on condition whenever the S2 will be depressed. The resistor R3 in capacitor C3 and push button switch S3. So, these forms the reset circuitry for the microcontroller. So, whenever this switch is pressed, S3 switch is pressed, the microcontroller will go to the reset condition. So, this circuit will be used for providing the clock signal. And this R1 and R2 are used for full up resistors for the push button switch. And this R4 is used for connecting LED to the 
circuit. In this way, the push button in this circuit, the push button switches S1 and S2 are used as input devices and LED is used as output device. So, in this way, we can use both LED and push button switches in the same circuit for interfacing to the microcontroller. So, in this session, we have discussed the what is a sensor, what are the examples for sensor, what is an actuator, so what is the I.O. subsystem, how the I.O. subsystem can be used in our processor and LED, so what is the basic current flow through the LED, how the current flow will be going through the LED and how to interface that LED to the A051 microcontroller and the push button switch. So, what is the basic operation of push button switch and how it will be interfaced to the microcontroller. So, these are the topics which have, we have discussed in the present video session. Thank you.